Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the fastest way to lose a chess game, the scholar's mate. Whatever you are a beginning who's fallen victim to it or just curious about how it works, this video is for you. I will show you what scholar mate is, how to spot it and most importantly how to defend against it. Let's jump right into it. Are you ready? Come on, okay, we are starting with section number one. What is Scholar's Mate? So, Scholar's Mate is one of the most famous quick checkmates in chess. It's a sequence of moves that traps an unprepared player in as few as four moves. Here is how it happens. White starts with e4, controlling the center and opening lines for the queen and a bishop. Black responds with e5, a natural move also controlling the center. White plays the move queen to h5 bringing the queen out early and threatening the pawn on f7. Of course, also the pawn on e5. Black might ignore the threat and play the move knight c6. Knight c6, of course, also developing a piece and also protect the pawn on e5. White plays the move bishop to c4, targeting f7 with both queen and a bishop. If black doesn't react properly, it's game over on the next move. For example, if knight f6, white delivers checkmate with queen takes f7, attacking the king with no way to block or escape. That's a scholar mate. Section number two, how to defend against scholar's mate. So how can you avoid falling into this trap? The key is awareness and simple solid defense. Let's look at some easy ways to stop scholar's mate. When you see white's queen come out to h5, your first instinct should be protect the f7 square. A great move is knight c6, which develops a piece, of course, and also defends e5 pawn at the same time. If white follows up with bishop c4, keep calm, everything is under control. Moves like queen e7 or g6 help solidify your position and block any immediate threats. The best response in this position is to play the move g6. This attacks the queen, force it to move and prevent it from targeting f7. Your next moves will be knight f6, bishop g7, d5, bishop g4, knight d4, castle and so on. By defending f7 and developing your pieces, you will not only stop scholars mate, but also gain a strong position for the rest of the game. Section number three, and very important, why scholars mate isn't good strategy. Now, you might be wondering, should I use scholars mate in my own games? The answer is big no, and here is why. Bringing your queen out early is risky. It can easily become a target for your opponent, forcing you a waste moves protecting it. It releases on your opponent making mistakes. If they defend properly, you will end with with you will end up with a weaker position and lose a lot of tempos. Instead of relying on tricks, focus on solid opening principles like controlling the center, developing your pieces and keeping your king safe. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's scholar's mate. It's fun trap to know, but now you also know how to avoid it and why it's better to focus on strong long-term long strategies. By the way, if you want to take your chess game to the next level, make sure to check out the Outpost Chess website through the link in the description below. It's the ultimate platform for online chess games tournaments, you know, some cash lines and even over the board events where you can play for real stakes also don't forget of course to join my membership club nitsan's team right here on youtube for exclusive perks and content if you enjoyed this video 
hit the like button and subscribe the channel and press the notification bell so you don't want to miss any future chess tips or tricks let me know in the comments if you have ever seen or used scholars mate in your games thanks for watching and i will see you in the next videos bye bye